okay, we're going to solve some logarithmic equations. Quick refresher, because you're going to need some quadratic skills back again today. If you have x squared and x, one option is to get zero on one side and then either factor or use quadratic formula. I'm going to factor out a 2, which will leave you with x squared plus 6x minus 7. And then I'm going to try and factor it. So I need two numbers that multiply to 1 times negative 7. So multiply to negative 7 and add up to 6, which, um, let's see, positive 7 and negative 1 will do it. So I'm going to rewrite my middle term of 6x as 7x minus 1x. And then I should be able to factor out a common factor if I make a couple of groups. So I can factor in x out of that first group and a negative 1 out of the second group, which will leave me with x times x plus 7 and negative 1 times x plus 7. Then that x plus 7 is an entire shared factor. So you can write your factored version as 2 times the quantity x plus 7 times x minus 1. This whole thing's equal to 0, so the x values that would make each factor equal to 0 would be x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 1. So you're going to get to do some factoring today. You guys are pros at that, hopefully by now. If not, you got another chance to practice it. We'll start off with a couple of simpler ones. So this is just a single logarithm on both sides of your equation. If you think back to when we had exponential equations, where the bases already matched, you just had to make sure that the exponents were the same to make both sides of your equation equal. This is sort of that same situation. So we have log base 4 on both sides. We just need to see what x values makes the inside of our logarithms equal to each other. So let's just set up an equation and solve to see what makes 2x plus 8 equal to 6x minus 12. So if you subtract 2x from both sides and then add 12 to both sides, you're going to have 4x equals 20. Divide by 4, you end up with x equals 5. You do need to check these because if you try it and plug it back in, it has to not only make both sides equal, but it has to give you a positive value inside of your logarithms. So if I try these, I get 18 inside both my logarithms, so both sides are the same. And also, that's both greater than 0 because logarithms are only defined for positive numbers. Let's try a couple where it's not just a single logarithm on each side. So we're going to rewrite these in exponential form, but first we need to get the logarithmic part by itself. So like on this one, it's 1 half times log base 7, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, which will give you log base 7 of 3x minus 2 equals 2. So it's not like equal to another log. So instead, let's use what we already know and rewrite it in exponential form. So this is the same thing as saying 7 to the second power equals the inside of our logarithm. So that would be 49 equals 3x minus 2. Add 2 would give you 51 equals 3x. And then divide by 3, and you're going to end up with x equals 17. So again, make sure that you check. At least go as far as to make sure that what you plug back in gives you a positive number inside of your logarithm, you can check it all the way through and make sure you're absolutely correct, which is always a good plan. So I'm going to check this one all the way through. If I plug that back in, that gives me 49 inside my logarithm. And then 7 to what power gets me 49? Well, 7 to the second is 49, so that's 2. 1 half of 2 is 1. And 49 is, when I plugged it back in, greater than zero, because remember domain of logarithms, if you think about your graphs, they have that vertical asymptote, so the values inside them have to be greater than zero. This one is, so we are good, and x equals 17. If you have two separate logarithms, not one on each side of your equation, you're going to want to condense this into a single logarithm. So if you have addition, when you condense that back, it's your values inside being multiplied together. So it's going to look like that. Remember that if you have log with no base written, it's base 10. Then I'm going to rewrite it in exponential form. 10 squared equals my 5x squared minus 5x. 100 
guess what looks like a quadratic? We're going to get 0 on one side and then hopefully factor it, if not quadratic formula. So I can factor out a 5 from everything. Let's do that. And then looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add up to negative 1. So I'm going to do that as, let's see, a negative 5x and a positive 4x would make that work. Do a little bit of grouping. First two terms, my x squared and negative 5x, I can factor an x out of. And then I can pull a 4 out of 4x minus 20. So my factored version is going to look like 5 times x minus 5 times x plus 4 equals 0. So potentially x equals 5 and negative 4. Go back to the very original though and check. At least make sure when you plug those back in, the inside of your logarithm is greater than 0. 5 times 5 is 25. It's greater than 0. 5 minus 1 is 4. That's greater than 0. So... We could go further, but it looks like x equals 5 is going to work. If I try negative 4 in those, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. My logarithm's not defined for a negative value, so I don't even really have to plug it into the other one. It doesn't work in log of 5 times x, so negative 4 is not a solution. Okay, one more because it's good to do a refresher of the quadratic formula. So same situation, except it's subtraction. So when I condense these back together, it needs to be x squared minus 4 divided by x inside my logarithm. So if you rewrite that in exponential form, 2 to the fifth equals the n sign. Since it's all over x being divided by x, let's multiply both sides by x. After I turn that into 32, it is. So I'll have 32x equals my x squared minus 4, which is another quadratic. Guess what? Get 0 on one side. This does not factor. So let's refresh your memory on that quadratic formula. So I could sing it. x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That was lovely, wasn't it? So if you plug things in, you're going to have some messy numbers inside there. So plugging in my values. Also, I'm running out of space. OK, looks like that. So if I do the inside in a calculator, you get 1,040 in there. I'm just going to round this off and not do like breaking down my square root. So I do need to do 32 plus the square root of 1,040 all over 2. And the minus version. Let's do the plus version first. If you punch that in a calculator, make sure to put the parentheses around the numerator. So that gives you approximately 32.125. If I do my negative version, again, just punch it into your calculator. You should get approximately negative 0.125. Check both of them in your original. If I check the negative 0.125 in that second part, log of 0.125 is undefined. Cross that one off. 32 works. 